Okie doke, folks. Hello. So today we are going to do our first step-by-step -step tutorial here in SketchUp. And what we are doing today is we are actually going to be creating a 3D model of Lego Tower 1. So when we're doing this today, uh, go ahead and start off by going to SketchUp for Schools. And from here, you're going to follow along with me. Now this tutorial Feel free to pause it as you work. That way, if you miss a step or you want to view a step over again, you can go back a few seconds, uh, make sure you have the step, and then continue playing the tutorial. And if, of course, if you have any questions while you are working, make sure that you ask myself or Mr. Brown after you rewatch that step that you have questions on. So like I said, we're here in SketchUp for Schools. And since we are making our Lego, we've been measuring them in inches. So when we create a new template, we're going to do this in feet and inches today. Now, like we said, the very first thing we always want to do whenever we get into SketchUp is we want to rename our model. So I'm going to click on the name and I'm going to name this one my name. So you'll name it your name. And then Lego Tower 1. So it'll be your name, Lego Tower 1. And make sure that you save this in your SketchUp Models folder that we made last week. There we go. So now as a reminder, last week when we did our instruction manual, we hopefully learned what all of these tools were. Today I will try to take my time to make sure I highlight with my mouse what tool I'm using, and I'll also say the name of the tool, uh, but in the future we're going to go through this a little bit more quickly. So it's a good idea to start getting comfortable with what tools live where. We're also today going to be using something on this side of the page that we didn't learn in our instruction manual. This icon right here that kind of looks like a director's clapboard. This right here is our scenes menu, which will allow us to toggle between like the top view, the front view, and side view of our plane. And it will also let us see things on an angle. So I know with our model in here already, he kind of follows the camera, so it might be a little weird to see the difference, but you'll definitely want to be using these as we move on throughout this. So what I'm going to do uh, to start is I'm actually going to get rid of our model and I'm going to view this middle or click on this middle button to view my model from the top view. Once I'm here, I should be seeing the green and the red lines. And then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. And this is where we're actually going to start drawing our Lego. Now as I click, remember that I don't click and drag, so right now I'm not holding down my mouse button, but I clicked once to place the corner, and as I move my mouse, that outline of the rectangle follows me, and you can see down here in the corner that I've got the actual dimensions. Now for all of these, we're going to type in the dimensions starting with 5 eighths of an inch. So if you look down there in the corner, it will be 5 slash 8 quotation mark. And we're going to make it a square, so I'm going to do comma 5 slash 8 quotation mark. When you're typing in the dimensions for a rectangle or a square, and we have two measurements, so a height and a, a length, they're separated by a comma, and don't forget to include the unit since we're working in inches here, or feet and inches, I should say. Uh, I'm including the unit quotation mark, which means inches. Then when I hit the enter key on my keyboard, it snaps to that size. Now you can see there is a little dot down here, it's quite small, so I need to zoom in. Right now I am using the scroll button on my mouse to zoom in. You can also come down here and grab the zoom button, and it will zoom in a little bit each time you click. You can also use this uh, zoom window button and click and drag a window around, around your shape. So we start off 
with this uh, 5 8 inch by 5 8 inch rectangle. And so in case you haven't guessed, this is going to be our 2 by 2 Lego. Now this Lego, if I view this from the angle, this Lego has some height to it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my push-pull tool, which is right over here underneath my rectangle tool. And I'm going to click on that square that I just made, and I'm going to make it 3 eighths of an inch tall. If you look down in that corner, you can see uh, it is moving incrementally 16 ths or 1 16th of an inch at a time. So I can move it up until I get 3 eighths, or I can always type in 3 eighths of an inch and hit enter, and it snaps directly to that measurement. So that's the outline of the Lego itself. One thing that we are gonna add to our 3D models that we haven't done in our drawings is we are actually going to represent the studs on the tops of the Legos. So I'm gonna come back to the top view here, and we're gonna start outlining where those studs go. For this, I'm going to use my tape measure tool to create some temporary lines. So these are really similar to the guidelines that we created when we did our orthographic drawings. When we're using the tape measure tool, I'm going to be measuring from the edges, and I'm going to start with the top edge up here. So I'm going to click once to place my tape measure, and then as I move, you can see it gives me that dotted line. So to start, I'm going to make a dotted line 1 16th of an inch away from the edge of my square. And I'm going to do this for all four sides of my Lego. So this space, if you look at your Lego, this is kind of that empty space where there is no stud yet. From this dotted line, I'm going to make another dotted line that's 3 16 of an inch away from the first. So that was from the top dotted line down. I'm also going to do from the left dotted line in, and again, 3 16 of an inch. So this is where my stud is going to go. Now I'm going to draw a circle, but I'll need to figure out the exact center of this box uh, because that's where I'm going to have the center of my circle. Now there are a couple ways we can do this. One way is with some complicated math. Another way is by drawing some lines and finding midpoints. So that one sounds a lot easier to me, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my line tool. Now with this, I'm going to draw my first line at the intersection of these two dotted lines. And I'm just going to go straight down until this intersection. Now you can see as I hover my line tool above this line, it highlights things like the endpoints and also the midpoint. So the midpoint has this kind of light blue line right there. So that's where I'm going to go ahead and make my line going across. Now that I have this line going across, again, I'll be able to find the midpoint, and this midpoint will be the exact center of this box. So that's where I'm going to put the center of my circle. So let me go ahead and grab that circle tool. It lives with the rectangle tool, so it's stacked under the rectangle. And again, as I hover my circle tool around different points, you can see that it will highlight and snap to an end point. And for me, I'm going to highlight and snap to this midpoint. So I click once and then move my mouse. Again, I'm not clicking and dragging. And I'm just going to come straight down until I hit that dotted line. It's important that you go straight down. If you go on a diagonal, you'll see that the circle is now much bigger than the box that we've outlined. So come straight down to that dotted line. And that's going to be our first stud. From here, we're going to erase some of those lines. So the solid lines, we did not need them. I accidentally erased a dotted line that I will still want later, so I'm just going to put that back real fast. And so this is my first stud. Let's go ahead and draw the rest of them. So we're just going to repeat that process. So with my tape measure tool, 
I'm coming over to the right side dotted line now, and I'm just going to make another dotted line 3 sixteenths of an inch away. 3 sixteenths of an inch away. And again, I'm going to grab my line tool, draw a straight line from one intersection to the next, and then I'm going to find my midpoint and draw a line straight across from there. Then I grab my circle tool to my midpoint, come straight down, and there we go, I've got my second stud. Once you start feeling comfortable with this, you can do a couple at a time. So these next two, I'll do them together. So from the bottom line now, I'm going to come up for 3 sixteenths of an inch. We already have those left and right lines from before. And I'm going to do all my lines first and then my circles second. So there are all my lines, and again, we just did straight down from the intersections and then straight across at the midpoint. And now with my circles, I start at that midpoint and I just come straight down, and there we go. So there are the outlines of all of my studs. Now from here, I'm going to grab that eraser tool again. And just like I did with the first stud, I'm going to go ahead and erase these solid lines that I don't need. I can also start erasing these dotted lines. Now that I have my outlines of my studs, I no longer need them. I can click on each individual line, or the eraser tool is one of the few tools where I can click and drag. And as I'm dragging, you'll see that it highlights each line that I pass over. And then when I let go of my mouse button, it deletes or erases all of them. So if you have a lot of erasing to do, that can be really helpful. Great. So now if I go ahead and view my Lego on an angle, I can see, like we said, I have the outlines of my studs, but I actually need to give them some height. So I'm going to come back here to the push pull tool and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can click on my studs and I'm going to raise them to 1 16th of an inch. And that right there is my completed 2x2 two two Lego. That wasn't too bad. Now is a great chance to save your work. Remember, we have to save our work manually. So go ahead and save this Lego right here, and then we'll move on to making the 1x2.